guys, turbocharged 51 over here. I hope you're having a splendid day wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to Turbo Fox Races and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. And guys, we're starting with something today that I think is going to be a very interesting series here today on the channel. We are going to try and build the best, not the quickest, the best and most fun track toy in Gran Turismo and let experiment one commence. For all, all, all my initial D fans and before you say it in the comments, I know it doesn't have the pop up up and down headlights, pop up up and down headlights, hashtag lots of love to donut media. It's the AE86 Toyota Corolla. Now this is the 11 three door 1600 GT or 1600 Apex or something. Let's quickly check. Yes, the 1600 GT Apex. I just should have put the two together. 1983 model. Now go come back with the with the with the details. Thank you. A 1.6 liter four cylinder. 1.6 liter four banger. 127 brake horsepower at six and a half thousand RPM and a full fart of 940 kgs. But this is not the car we're going to be driving. Also, track is kind of interesting. Um, we're going to do two tracks to test this car on. And this is not a drift test. This is literally a track toy or track monster type test. But here's the categories. The car should be decently quick to fast. There should be... I will rate the, that. I will we'll rate that out of 10. There will be a fast factor. Oh, a fast factor. I just said that. Sorry, I'm stupid. There will be a fun factor. And then an overall handling factor. So speed, handling, fun. But let me show you guys the beautiful car. Well, the beautiful uh, attempt that we're going to put um, into this car. Just to give me a second. So this is our first attempt at the best and most fun track toy in Gran Turismo 7. Guys, the car's been wide-bodied. The car's gotten a splitter. The car's got gotten a rear wing it's gotten a sick paint job a nice set of rooms which is one thing that the ae86 corolla does not have in my personal opinion the standard rooms from toyota just look awful but this is our attempt now i'm going to show you guys the specs in a second excuse if if you heard that guys uh, there's a massive thunderstorm in my hometown currently so if you heard that i humbly apologize it is still just way too hot to sit in a room without a fan and with closed windows so i do apologize in any case so this little thing untested just built yeah, I told you guys one of the in the Bugatti video. I'm, I'm not always going to show you guys the building of the cars. The cars also got a roll cage, by the way. The specs of the car. But let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this beautiful AE86 Corolla. And drop a like down below on the video while you are down there. I love the rims that we put on this. It looks so good. And I think the fact that the rims are orange actually suited. Like, honestly, I think it really makes the car stand out. Ooh, the light's coming on. That is the smexy. That is smexy. And then have the car quickly turn i can see the car already has a bit of body roll and we do have suspension on the car but but here's the specs guys it's been it's been stroked up and bored up a little bit it's now all basically a 1.665 liter so we could say a 1.7 liter it's still rear wheel drive but now it's got 307 brake horsepower at 9,000 uh, RPM and it weighs only 808 kilos. Let's round it out down to 800 kilos and it is turbocharged. So, without any further ado, let's get this baby on the first track that we can. No, so guys, here is everything that's installed on the car. So first of all, we've got the racing soft slicks because obviously we're trying to build a, a, a track toy but that should still be fast so we need the grip. Then fully customizable suspension, the car is dropped down low, 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 low. And the anti-roll bars, I actually want to stiffen them each one. Then fully customizable limited slip diff, diff, limited slip differential, because uh, this car had a non-limited slip diff, and then one wheel would spin and the other one would not, so the, the car just went all long K. Um, I did do like a few laps just to feel the car, but I haven't really pushed to the car. NOS. 
then fully customizable transmission, obviously the fully customizable ECU, downforce levels 300, well for the rear and max on the front as well, because again, a grippy track toy, high RPM turbo, I couldn't put anti-lag on the car, which was so sad, but then, why is the intercooler even taken off, in any case? We could have put on a supercharger, but the turbocharger gives more power. Um, racing air cleaner, racing silencer, racing exhaust manifold. Um, we have racing slotted discs with racing brake pads. No drifting hand brakes and brake balance stuffies. And then carbon prop shaft, racing clutch, and well, that is with the gearbox. And then no steering angle kit because it's not a drift car, it's a track toy. So that you guys can also see proper specs on the left of the car. And um, the front rear weight balance actually 55 on the front. 45 at the rear makes the car a little bit i think it's going to make the car a little bit jolty on the rear but and not the end of the world but let's get into this and see what why what lap time we can set here at Sakuba? if we can even go under one minute i think the car has the capabilities but uh, we'll have to wait and see now you guys can see that there's a bunch of other cars on this list i'm sorry i don't know how to clean this list i do not know how i don't think you can but in any case let's see what the ae86 can do uh, so three consecutive laps in the AE86. Let's see what happens. Oh, there's a lot of grip. There's a lot of grip. Yep, rear end is light. But here we go. Oh, wow. The speeder only goes to 180. We can get on the throttle a little bit earlier through that corner. Okay. Oi. Racing slicks don't go onto the grass. Note to self. The car really is grippy, it's just the rear end decides to go whenever it wants. She sounds very good though. Okay, let's see what this little Toyota can do. Okay, first lap in the books. Fifty-six five, so we're already under a minute now. Let's see if we can better this. A little bit, a little bit glitchy on on the exit. That was a big risk, but it's all good. Oh wow! Yeah, we just ruined this lap, but it's okay. We've got one more lap after this. That was a really good run through the airport, like seriously good run through the airport. Now let's see if we can put a full lap together with the AE86. Last corner, I love this last corner. It's, just, it's very fun to drift as well. 56.2. Can we get into the 55s? Not the best exit, but still there's a lot of time still to gain on this lap. Still a ton of oversteer, it's very hard in first gear. But the car doesn't rotate as well in second gear for some other reason. out of the final corner but it seems like our second lap was the best guys i'm gonna give the car a fourth lap because there's still time to gain here come on little toyota that first corner exit i had on the second lap was so amazing Yeah, second gear's the way.
Okay, guys, five laps, so the circuit is short. Let's get this. A little bit of a terrible exit coming out of the final corner, but it's all good. That was a good exit. Oh, there we go, there we go. Now she's hooking up, now she's hooking up. I messed up the final hip, but so bad. Okay, come on. Nope. Okay, guys, that's the best we got. It was a 56-2 out of the little TO zone. One thing I can show you guys that she can do. There we go. Even 300 horsepower is enough to do some donuts with even slick tires. So we did a 56.2. I'm actually very impressed with that. But this is not the big test. And the big test, we only have one lap to do it. Unless we make a big mistake or like completely do something that I feel will invalidate the lap. So let's quickly see here. 56. So the Toyota is actually fifth compared to an M3. A three, uh, 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 a, sec a third generation Supra, an M4, and my R34, which you guys already know is is very beastly. So I'm very impressed with this little car. Very, very impressed with this car. So this car is officially the leader of this list on a short track. But guys, here comes the next one, and it's going to be a goodie. Welcome. To the green hell. Sim Sim Jimmy! For those of you guys that don't watch Jimmy Broadbent, this is a track that Jimmy Broadbent made famous in the sim racing community. It is the green hell, nothing else but the Nordschleife, or in English, the Nurburgring. Not the full 24 hour land with the Grand Prix circuit intact, this is just the Nordschleife. And guys, this is gonna be fun. Now, once again, no NOS that I that can be used, even though obviously I put NOS on the car because obviously I'm gonna play with the car when with that when I'm not making videos. Because so far the fun factor of this car is pretty darn high, keeps you on your toes. But um, speed factor lacks a little bit, but handling factor also reasonably high score. But we're gonna score the car at the end of the video. Now unlike Tacuba, where we have three to five laps, which I decided in this video because three is too little and five is like a sweet spot. Here, I only have a, a, a one attempt at a clean lap. Obviously, like I said previously, if the lap's invalidated, in my personal opinion, like going way too wide or corner cutting, the lap will be restarted, or if I make one ginormous mistake. But this is the green hell, so mistakes are made. So if, if a little mistake section, little, little compilation follows this, you will know why. But let's get to this AE86. On the stage of Germany's finest track, the best track in the world. <laughs> never mind. Never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> First mistake made. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, how I wish I had a sim rig for this. This feels so good. Oh, big moment, big moment. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. Will she go airborne over the hump? Here we go. Nope, stays planted. Oh, wow. 260 and a little 800 kilogram shell. Short shifters for the wheel spin there. But this car honestly feels freaking amazing. But you have to rev it. If you don't rev it, no power. Ooh, that's a bit late on the turning. It, it literally just revs out to, to the car's speedometer in third gear. Woohoo! Curves are deadly here. Okay guys, for the next minute, I'm gonna keep quiet. Just enjoy the sound of this beautiful AE86. Guys, I could have been so much quicker on the power coming out of that hairpin, but this car really feels good. It really, really feels good. So far, the second attempt's going well. But this uphill section, the little 300 horsepower is going to struggle up this hill. And it might not seem steep. steep. Trust me, it's very steep. It's struggling to get to 240. It's decelerating. Wow, okay. Who could have carried so much more speed through there? Come on, little AE86. Okay, let's head to the first carousel. What a run! Oh boy, touched a bit of grass there. You guys have seen how at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the lap here, well, close, getting close to the end, I can start to feel the limits of the car, and I'm pushing, a, I'm pushing a bit more. Well, not pushing more, but I'm feeling more comfortable to push in certain scenarios. We actually got nice air there. Okay. Big cojones, big cojones, big cojones, big cojones, big cojones, big cojones. That felt good. That felt good.
Okay guys, here we go. Final two corners and then the straight. I can actually do this flat out. Oh my word. Okay now, here's where she's gonna struggle because there's a big uphill coming. Fifth gear, it's only a five speed gearbox guys by the way. God looks nice in the interior though, just so you guys can see a little bit. There we go. Well, we're almost at 260 as we hit the, the big part of the hill. The downhill is going to be the problem because now we're going to have to, all that weight's just going to lift up and compress again and then we're going to have to hit the brakes. Is this car going to do a sub seven minute lap? I haven't even kept an eye on the time. Oh wow, mess up the final corner turbo. Six fifty six. Wow. That is impressive. That's impressive. Like that is seriously impressive. And I messed up the final corner so bad, like so bad. My Turbonatics. So, obviously, we know there's a lot more time in that Nürburgring time. Like, I want to say at least, like, for my capabilities and putting this, pushing this car to the max, without any mistakes, like, if I can get a faultless lap with my max potential, I think we can shave off about 5 two, to 8 seconds. Remember, the Nürburgring is very large. I think this car is capable of under a 6 minute 50. But like I said, we only have one attempt and we have to get used to the car as we drive because that is part actually of the happiness factor, of, of, of the fun factor, happiness. What am I saying? I'm sorry guys, it's late at night. Point being, it's part of the fun factor. So now let us rate the Toyota Corolla AE86 1600 GT. What was the other word? A Whatever the word was. In any case, you guys know what I mean. So... Now, here's the big part. What are we going to rate the speed? The handling. And the fun factor. The fun factor for me is going to be the easiest one. So, let's do it this way. Let's start with the handling first. We'll leave the hard one, the speed, for last. So, you guys can let me know in the comments down below what you would rate this as. So. We're going to do it the old motorsport lounge way. If I give a car an 11 out of 10, that means the car was perfect for that, for, in my opinion, for that category. A 7.5 out of 10. Let me tell you why. The reason I can't give it an 8 is because of the very unpredictable rear end. Now hear me out. A 7.5 seven, a seven out of 10 is still freaking brilliant. There's no way to sh there's no way to shy away from that. It's just the unpredictable rear end. I wish I could just slam a little bit more downforce on this car for those second second gear corners where I don't have to short shift to third and lose a little bit of time. Because like I told you guys on the lap, this little car wants to rev. It's got ninth. It's got a nine thousand RPM red line for a reason. If it revs, it's got more power. It's got it's got to be more nippy coming out of corners. But the car's corner entry and mid-corner speed, if you can manage the, the, the throttle and like the, 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 um, the, the amount of slip from the rear, it's a little beast mid-corner and corner entry. It's just that corner exit that needs to be, you know, a little tinkered with a bit. And so you know, if you go into so much depth of tuning, it takes away from the fun factor. Now to speed. Now this is where the little Toyota is going to lose out. Yes, the car is light. That makes it very nippy, which again is very good for the corner entry and mid corner. And it again power on the corner exit. Just like so would be cool. when it's in its rev range, it's just very very unpredictable. Um, hence for the what's the two three three mistakes on the lap around the the Nordsch life. Speed, however, I feel if this car. Even if it was even a little bit lighter to be able to control the power better. If we had literally 50 to 100 horsepower more, the speed factor of this car would be so much better. But for speed, unfortunately, I'm going to have to be harsh. 
I can't give the little AE86 more than a 5 out of 10. So it's self-explanatory. You guys saw even like on the Nurburgring's uphill sections, it struggled to get to 240. And it's it's supposed to do an easy 250 to 260, even with the gear ratios that I've chosen. I mean, you only select fifth gear close to 240, so it's still got a whole gear that it can rave out. And as soon as it hits, it hits an uphill, it's as if the car just decides it goes into limp mode. It, it's got that sort of feeling towards it, but still a very little fun car. And that's where we lead into the fun factor. Now this little car, for all my very, very passionate um, AE86 viewers, it's not an 11 out of 10, unfortunately. But this car is so much fun. I will be able to drive this car around any track non-stop. Even the tracks on this game that I, that I really do not like, that I actually kind of hate a bit. This car, I would still drive around there because this car would make it fun. It's that good. So for that exact reason, this car is getting a 10 out of 10 for fun factor. So, and then also guys, I actually want to add something. And so guys, the last category for this car is the capability category. Reason I'm telling you guys this, obviously, as I, you guys heard throughout the Nürburgring lap, the closer we got to the end of the lap, the more confident I got in the car. And I was, I was willing to, not necessarily like exceed limits, but I was willing to push limits more. And the thing is, the more, when a car has a certain factor where the more you drive it, like, and obviously all cars have this factor. But the thing is, the quicker and the more it grows, when it comes to how much you, how much more you're willing to push it, and how much bigger of a capability you think it has, for me is is personally very important. So, to with the capability category, I'm gonna give this car a a, a, a nine out of ten. You're either gonna be stupid fast with this car or stupid slow. I don't think there's a middle ground because if you can figure out the limits of the car very quickly and you can uh, can manage to push yourself more. It is only going to make the fun factor and the handling factor so much stronger. But for, for this car then, the total for the little AE86 Corolla is 31 and a half out of 40. And I think for the first car that we have tested, that is absolutely a brilliant, a brilliant score. So guys, let me know in the comments down below which car you would like to see next on this little journey we're going to take. We're going to do a few cars and then we're going to see how everything pans out for us. But the Toyota ends with a 31 and a half out of 40. And I once again think that is absolutely brilliant. Considering the fact that for speed I gave it a 5 out of 10. That is brilliant. But guys, that has been the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for staying to the end. Please make sure to drop a like down below on the video before you leave if you haven't done it yet so far. Make sure to go check out the links in the description down below for all the saucy and juicy social media stuff that is coming your way. And also, and also, if you have not yet subscribed to Turbo Fox Racers, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe down below and don't forget to ding that bell to never miss a future video here on Turbo Fox Racers. Well, video short or live stream here on Turbo Fox Racers. You guys have been amazing. I love you guys as always. God bless and I'll see you in the in which whichever form of content comes next. Cheers! Cheers.